All right, I am back for some more fun. I uploaded the Backfire Milk Jug Challenge about a week ago. About 20,000 of you guys have viewed it. And about 200 of you said, hey, that wasn't a fair challenge. Okay, two things you didn't like in the video. One was the bench. I said it's gonna be a little hard to pack that thing around in the woods. So ditch the bench. The second thing is there was a lot of conversation about the fact that a part of the challenge that's pretty hard is getting the an accurate range. So two things with that that I would that I would say without trying to be defensive is one, I 100% I understand the whole bench thing. It's not a hunting thing. I actually most of the time shoot prone from right here to do most of my um, validation on, on, long, on long shots. Um, I do have the bench set up here right now. It's down here uh, just because it was winter. We get a lot of snow. And to be honest, I literally didn't even think about the fact that the bench was going to be a problem. But I see the point. My sight picture, whether I'm on a bench or whether I'm laying prone, um, it I don't see any difference. I shoot off of a bipod, I throw the bottle rest in the back of here. Whether I'm on a bench or whether I'm shooting from here, um, it's like it's in a vise. It's locked up. It's not even moving. The crosshairs is just sitting dead still. So, but I get it. That is not actually a hunting scenario when I'm shooting from a bench. So I'm going to ditch the bench. The second thing was, on that video, I said I'm going to set everything at max range. And so when I set it at max range, I take one range, it kind of takes the whole range finder thing out. And I understand the fact that that was part of the challenge, and so we're going to redo this. We're going to recreate this. Uh, I'm going to shoot just, I got 10 jugs setting out here at random ranges, and I have them on T-posts just to make it a little tougher, just to simulate it closer to what they were doing, because they were shooting a lot of those things off T-posts. Of uh, I will say this with ranging these targets, to me, the ranging, like, it's pretty easy. But if you're trying to range the milk jug, it can be very tricky because you don't know if you're hitting the ground 100 yards behind it because it is pretty flat here. So you have to make sure you're right on the jug. But what I'm doing is I'm not ranging the milk jug. I'm ranging the lowest part that I can see. So for me, most of these, I can see the base of the T-post going into the ground. So my rangefinder dot is going on the base of the T-post right where it meets the ground. And then I'm not making any mistakes of getting a range that's too far or, or hitting the ground in front of it. I'm just ranging that spot right under the jug, right on the base of the T-post. If you have deer, antelope, antelope are prime example. They're out in the prairies. Don't try to range the antelope. Try to range where they're standing on. Range their feet. If you can see their feet, range the lowest spot there that you can see, and you're way more likely to get an accurate range really quickly. The, the problem with getting ranges a lot of times is things happen really quickly. You take a quick range, you only get one or two shots, and then you better shoot pretty quick, or the thing moves on and all this kind of stuff, and your heart's racing and all, all kinds of adrenaline going on. So that's kind of where mistakes are made. I had uh, my son out here, opening day, we laid right here and a doe came out he's 12 years old shooting a 7 prc a doe comes out in the middle of this field at 485 yards and i ranged where she's standing i ranged her feet and he dialed it up and the deer didn't take a step so there's a little range finder tip for you that to me takes a lot of the challenge out of it but we're going to do it the problem with long range, and I said it before, is the hardest part is your left and right. Today we have a really nice day. It's almost 60 degrees out here, but yesterday it was really cold, and so with that change we have a lot of wind. So again, I believe the hard part about this whole challenge is left and right. It's misses left and right. So, let's get to shooting. Let's see how many of these jugs we can take out today. All right, 
first jug is at 325 yards calls to come up two and a half I to make sure my camera's rolling We got that one. All right, four hundred and eighteen yards calls for four point four. There's two. All right, I'm, on, I'm dialing this thing back to zero every time. Part of part of the habit, your habit should be, you should dial your scope back after every single time that you're shooting anything long, unless you're planning on shooting that again and again. It's just a good habit to have. If you're hunting and you shoot at an elk across the canyon, for example, at 700 yards and you shoot and you're all excited and you close the bolt and you start your hike and get over there and you find he's still alive and you go up and try to finish it and your scope's still dialed for that shot, you're going to shoot over him. I seen my brother do that on a bear one time. Speaking from experience, I've seen it happen, so it's easy to do. Always dial her back to zero. All right, there's two for two. That was 400 and, what did I say, 18 yards, I think. All right, this is shot number three. All right, 430 yards. That one's a little bit harder to range because there's like this knob right in front of it. 430 calls for four and a half. Wind's picking up. I know when you're hunting, you can't always wait on the wind. But I can also tell you when I'm hunting, most of the times I have a target that's twice as wide as that milk jug. So we're just going to give that wind a few seconds. I almost didn't do this challenge today just because I thought it might make me look like a fool. This wind is no joke, and wind can make even the best shooters look like a fool on the wrong day. All right, 
right there was number three, 400 and was it 30, I think. All right, let me change my cameras up and do it again. All right, this is shot number four. Shot number four. Four hundred and ninety yards calls for five point nine. All right, I'm gonna go double check my camera back here, make sure I am on the right target. It can be a little confusing to make sure that I am looking at the same target. All right, that was shot number four, 490 yards. It's a hit. Every shot, I really feel like I'm crossing my fingers because I'm trying so hard to play this wind. I feel it and I hear it in my earmuffs. I hear it gusting. I just gave it a little bit of second until it slows down, but I literally feel like I'm crossing my fingers because I can so easily miss these things left and right. All right, let's go to shot number five. All right, shot number five. All right, 530 yards calls for 6.77. Hit. Well, that's the same way we, the same way we started the last target, five for five. I am shooting the same rifle, if you haven't noticed. Five for five. I know these weren't all at the max range, but I'm trying to simulate what Mike did on the Backfire channel. So we went, I think, or what was our closest? Three, I forget, 320? I still do have a couple of them closer than that. Like, I don't know, 270, 280, 290 range. All right. Shot number six, coming up. All right, shot number six. Five fifty five calls for seven point four.
we got him. Six for six. Like I said before, I'm literally crossing my fingers on this wind. I'm trying to shoot between gusts just to take some of the wind out, but you can probably hear it. It's present. All right, shot number seven. Huh. Trying to hold my breath to get a range. It is 600 yards. There's seven. With as much wind as we're dealing with, trying to shoot between the gusts, I'm honestly surprised that I went seven for seven right now. I expected to miss some left and right. All right, gotta move the camera. All right, this one's 600 as well, 599. This one's setting where you got the woods in the background. And it's setting right on a ridge. It's pretty hard to actually get a really good range on it and to not make sure you're not hitting the woods. So I just dialed, uh, hit the woods behind and it's 650 yards of the woods. So I think we got a good accurate range. 599 yards, 8.42. Pretty much a repeat of the last shot. I keep forgetting whether I turn the camera on back there or not. All right. Yeah, that one was pretty hard to see in the scope. It wasn't that hard to see, but it's kind of setting down in a little bit. And so where I was aiming was like on the grass line. All right, that is eight for eight. That is eight for eight. For all you guys commenting that said the bench was cheating we're further ahead laying here but I will say not all of them were at 620 yards and I had to range them so you guys thought this would be harder having to range and lay here and just sit at the bench and shoot them at 620 and honestly I feel like I have more wind to deal with today than I did the other day eight for eight all right let's finish it up we got two more All right, we got two left. Let's see if we can clean this. And these two are the closest ones. Three hundred, three hundred yards. One point nine two MOA.
All right, last one. We uh, missed the 300 yard one. I looked at the footage, barely missed it to the right. Kind of got hit with a gust of wind right at the time. I felt like I broke as good a shot as any, but I will say this. Anytime that you have targets closer, you tend to not take quite as much precision as you might longer. It's because it seems easier. I can't tell you how often I bring, I can't tell you how often I've brought customers out here and shot in this field. And at 300 yards, they were not shooting any better group than they were at seven, 800 yards. And I showed them, I told them, look, you just shot an amazing group at 750. Look at your group at 300. It's the same size. The problem is you're not treating that 300 with the same precision. So we come back on the 300 and I'm like, now treat it with the same precision and then they can stack them on top of each other just because you're being more precise and doing the things right and so I feel like I made a really good shot on that water bottle but I wanted a clean run and I thought it would be easy but at 300 but I still missed it just to the right all right last one all right 250 Appreciate you sticking around if you've stuck around this far appreciate you watching I did have a bunch of people asking me about the bottle rest and had some people messaging me wondering where can I buy it bottlerest.com I will put a link in the comments try to make it easier for you thanks for sticking around appreciate you watching give me a thumbs up comment let me know what you thought good bad the ugly whatever appreciate you until next time, have a great day.